Thank you, Denora. Um, yeah, great to be with you guys and everybody today. This is this is pretty exciting and uh, very excited to show a couple of the current enhancements that are in uh, Storeroom 2.3, uh, but also uh, our roadmap and future uh, functionality for uh, specifically serial numbers uh, in Phase 2. And, and again, shout outs to our development team and, and a lot of this of, of was it is taking place and, and getting done and uh, trying to respond to your requests and the things that you are asking for. So one of the first things I want to talk about uh, and briefly show is the UI enhancement that we've made in CityWorks for material config. And there's been a lot of en enhancements, but if you remember, uh, to do material, you had to go to three different places. You had to go to the material config, the storeroom material, and the supplier page. Now we've consolidated this into one page. Uh, this has been an idea that has been um, out there from our clients for a long time. And I can see my material. I can see my storeroom material and the material in storeroom. And the same with suppliers, all on one page now. This also makes it so that I can interact with these things. So if I wanted to add a lot of material at one time to a storeroom or a supplier, I can do that all at one time by assigning it uh, now to a supplier. Also, one of the things that we've added is the ability to clone now. So I'm gonna look up a water meter and we're gonna be using uh, meters today for a number of our examples, but I can clone this, so I need to select it. And I can clone this now. So if I'm routinely using material to um, create other material or would like to, now I can do that. And I can assign the storerooms and the suppliers, or I can simply uh, tell it to respect the relationships that are already created uh, for that material. So again, some, some significant improvements with our uh, UI and others, but uh, specifically with uh, managing our materials and the material configs. Now I want to get into to serial numbers and, and really start to get into this. And I still got to change my page here. There we go. So we're going to talk now about how storeroom can manage your serial numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and get the ball rolling here as we show phase uh, what we have called phase one and this is actual functionality in storeroom 2.3 and i have created a dashboard to kind of show this so this is a dashboard showing material that's serialized in my database and i can do this through the material config so i'm going to go to my material config i'm going to look up my meter and I'm gonna select that. Now here I can look at my details on this and you can see in the middle here, we've got is serialized. We're gonna look at right now the first part of this, which is converting material that's already in my storeroom. And down here at the bottom under the uh, stock on hand, I can see that I've got three storerooms with these meters in them and there's five in each one. So again, this is the conversion process. So when I tell Storeroom that I'm making this material serialized, Storeroom's gonna wanna have serial numbers for these 15 items. So here it shows me the five, my modal shows me the five in each storeroom. And then I have several different ways to get this in. The first way is to enter this manually. So not only can we capture serial numbers, but also warranty dates now and expiration dates. And I can use barcoding to do this as well. I can see my different storms. But I really want to show you the new feature we've got, which is I can upload a CSV file with all of this data. So we have a template that's provided. You download it one time, and then you can use this template now uh, an Excel template that you can fill out and this can be uploaded. Many vendors actually will provide for you a CSV file or a list of barcodes for the serial numbers that are in a um, receipt that you might get. So once I filled out that, 
that spreadsheet. I can go find that or, or access that. And now instead of having to manually enter everything in, hopefully I can map this. And here's my uh, template that I downloaded. And as you can see, everything is filled right from that CSV file. So I can go to all of my different storerooms and see the serial numbers being assigned uh, to those storerooms. And then when I hit done, that has converted that material now to serial numbers and it's added those. So you can see now here, I have a new item in my dashboard. I can open this up and see each storeroom. I can see the 15 items in here with their related serial numbers, expiration dates and warranty dates. So that's the conversion process. That's the first step. Now, if you obviously don't have any stock on hand for something, it's not gonna ask you to, um, to enter in serial numbers. So when that material now starts to come in and it's gonna be received, go to my receive function, select my item, and we're gonna receive five of these. And I can fill this out just like I would any, any other receipt transaction, use accounts if I want, comments and, and so forth. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and add this uh, five items, and I will get that modal again. And it's telling me now, okay, you're receiving five items. I need serial numbers for these. Again, I can use my CSV, and there's a different template for that. So there's two templates. You can download that. I'm going to actually do it manually this time. So I'm going to put in, uh, there's warranty dates on this. <clears throat> may not be expiration dates, but these are all things you can capture now. And I can manually enter in these serial numbers. I can just type it in and hit enter and it'll start adding these. I have a ticker up here at the top that counts them. So I know where I'm at. I can use the barcode capabilities there. You can see in the bar. So once these are all entered in, I'm ready to then receive this. I hit done and Verify it. Remember, you always verify everything before we commit anything. It's completed. I That's been received now. So now if I go back to my dashboard, I see now I've got 20 on hand. So I've got the original 15 from converting it, plus the five additional ones that I've received now. So this is big. This is giving us the ability to manage serial numbers, warranty dates, expiration dates, and so forth. Now I can even put those serial numbers onto a work order. So we're gonna issue uh, these uh, five of those to a work order. And I'm gonna go ahead and type in my serial numbers. Got a comp, or I'm just gonna type in my uh, work order ID, get a verification that I got a valid uh, work order. We're gonna add five, so it's gonna give me a list uh, five at a time, and I can see I've got 10 total because in our main storeroom, we had, we had 10, we haven't assigned any yet. So I can assign these by just selecting them and then hitting the plus, and it will add those to my list. And those are the serial numbers that'll be issued, or I can use this autofill. So I can very quickly, simply scan, uh, hit the autofill and it'll populate that. Verify everything is correct, commit that, and now we've created that issue to that work order of those serialized items. So as I indicated, this is phase one. Uh, phase two takes this really to another level. And what I really wanna uh, show and, and explain in phase two is We've got it in storeroom and that's great, but we really want that to be available in the GIS so that when it is issued to the work order, it's ready to be added now <clears throat> uh, to the work order and to be able to use uh, equipment change out, for example, to be able to add this material. So what I've got in this dashboard now is showing my serial numbers up here at the top. And this is a development database. So this is gonna look a little different uh, as we've got some different information here. Hang on, trying to hit the play button. There we go. Okay, 
So at the top, as I indicated, I've got a dashboard showing my serial numbers. At the bottom, I've added a dashboard that is a GIS search or query showing the serial numbers and the object ideas of items that have been added to the uh, GIS database. And we're going to work with this uh, meter right here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this selected and add and, and receive in five of these. And as I receive those five, it will add them to my material. So how do I set this up? Again, we go back into storeroom. We set up that it is serialized material. Now, again, this is, I'm going to show a mock-up here because this is a future uh, functionality. You'll have an additional checkbox here to set it to default to add it to the GIS. And the reason that is, is you may manage material that you uh, want to track the warranty dates and serial numbers and so forth. You may not want to update the GIS or have it in the GIS. So this will be a box that you can check as default. But once this box is checked as is serialized, now I can map this to the GIS. So I'm going to go to admin. I'm going to go to my GIS fields. And when I do now, one of those new fields is the serialized material. And it will list those materials. So this meter, now I can map it. So I select the asset group the asset type, which in this case is serial, uh, I'm sorry, uh, water meters. And now I can map any fields from storeroom to the GIS. So things like the, um, the description of the meter, the manufacturer, the model, the serial number, expiration, warranty, all of that can be added now and mapped so that when this gets received, it will add all of those fields to the GIS. So now I'm going to go ahead and receive some of these in. So uh, go ahead and select my item again. I'm going to receive five of these, add it to the list. Okay, we're receiving it. So we need to have those serial numbers in here. So I'll go ahead and put some information in here uh, that will pertain to this. And then put in my serial numbers. Now, if you'll notice while I'm putting in the serial numbers, to the right of that, there's a GIS and an update GIS box. This will be checked by default uh, as I check it in the configuration. Uh, then when I come here, this will be checked by default. But this is a second option for me to confirm that I, yeah, I want to update the GIS or no, I don't want to update the GIS. So in this case, we absolutely do. We want those, um, meters to be uh, in the GIS table. So now I've got all of them in here. I'm going to do my verification that I've got the right items. I've got the right quantity. I'm going to commit this. And when I do, I'll get my confirmation. And now when we go back to our dashboard, we can see there are five new meters in our GIS table. And those are ready now to be uh, issued to a work order and assigned to um, to an asset. So let me show you real briefly here how that can be done. So I'm going to go over to respond. I've got my map open. I'm going to go ahead and select one of my meters. And let's create a work order. And my information all fills in. We're going to do a replacement. So I'm going to go ahead and create this. So we've got a work order now to replace that water meter. Close my map. I'm going to select my, my feature over here. And using my equipment change out, I'm now going to select that feature. It's going to list that object of that the old meter that we're going to replace. So all I do is hit replace, and now that meter that we want to replace that with is already in the GIS. It got there when we received it. So I can hit uh, the add new child or the replace child, and I can type in the object ID here and then verify it. I'm going to use 
uh, my search capability to find one of those meters. So I'm going to type in my, oops, got that wrong. What was that? 566. So type in my object ID and then it filters down. There are those five that we just added. So I'm going to save this. And that meter now has been replaced with the one uh, that we received just a couple of minutes ago. Now I can, I can edit my GIS and add any additional information I want in here, uh, put it in service, and fill out any of the other fields that I, that I need to on this. So again, this is really exciting for us to be able to provide this. We've been asked for a long time uh, to, when are we gonna be able to manage serial numbers? Uh, and we can now. 